Hi, it's Lori from Positive Thanks Living, and welcome to day 11 of the collaging challenge with Barbara's 49 Dragonflies December Daily 2020. Today I'm going to use a black and white photo of my granddaughter. <laughs> Some photos that I printed out just to decide whether I which one I would use. I'm going to use this one, I think. She spends a couple days with me every week and often when I'm uh, watching your videos, it's because she's sleeping. She's fallen asleep in my arms and I can just enjoy watching junk journaling and take care of her. Now this envelope came in the mail. It's a junk envelope with a bit of a window and I thought what I'd do is put this on the page with her photo inside like so. Obviously I'm going to cover the envelope and I'm going to use Maureen Astrid's pretty papers. Uh, I have this bear on day one of my journal. I'll show you. And I, I just love the expressions on the animals' faces. I love the colors. Getting a little bit away from the traditional green and red, because this will be new for day 11 be a new uh, page you can go here so the envelope will go on this side of the page and flip it open and there so I have an interesting idea on how to attach this to the page so that I can use the lip to fold under as you can see yesterday's, I added to it, I added this little piece of a card because these looked as though they were hanging from nowhere. I added a little washi tape and this onto that. But my glue stick didn't stick. Fortunately, it gives me an opportunity. I'm, I think I'm gonna put brads on here. It'll attach to this side and then I can glue it down again. This was the paper that I was experimenting with the Distress Oxide on, and I just wanted to show you a journaling card that I made afterward. This was the paper. It's a linen paper, woven, ivory color, South Worth. And I dragged my Distress Oxide over the paper, just directly on the paper and then spritz some water on it. Once I turn off the camera, I felt like I wanted to do a little more heat embossing like here. So I tried a stamp and with the gold, I just, can you see how it shimmers? And this is a stamp also, but with a white embossing powder. And it's a very, in, I folded the sides in, so this is the journaling spot. And it's a very interesting texture. It's, it feels like faux leather. It, it's not smooth. It's not rough either. Anyhow, it's very interesting. So it's going to work out well as a journaling card. And it matches the Distress Oxide papers you'll see on day nine and day 10. But onto a different color palette. A little bit of blue, a little bit of mm, bluey green, some, some uh, forest animals. I really like these papers from Maureen Astrid. I first saw Maud using them to make lanterns. And I thought, oh yes, I want to make a lantern like that, which I'm still going to do. 
but right now we're going to cover this envelope so I can go on this page for day 11. Sorry, getting, taking a little while to get there, to get started. I want to cover this side and I want to cover this side, but I want to leave the window opening. I've never done that. I've watched people do it, but I've never done it. So it'll be, you'll watch me struggling today because I decided I was going to do it all while I'm recording, regardless. Okay, so the question is, what do I want to begin with on the front? I think what I'll do is use this one. Because I have used the bear before. sure that it's not crooked and I'm just gonna trace around the edges here do you use your junk mail envelopes and pieces of paper and things I've, my husband's he's he almost takes it like a challenge now when he comes in with the mail what can you do with this yes can you use this no of course Yes, yes I can. I can use that. Even if I have no idea exactly how to use it. And we have Christmas cards arriving. So I'm saving the envelopes from the Christmas cards in addition to the stamps. Just yeah, This one came the other day. <laughs> Cut it out. So that'll go in my stash for probably next year. Now you're wondering whether I have a paper trimmer, and I do. I actually have two of them, but for whatever reason, I cannot get them to cut straight. They cut crooked. I'm not saying that cutting with a scissor is necessarily straight when I do it either, but it's more straight than the paper trimmer, hence the scissor. I look at the guillotines, guillotines. Some people pronounce it guillotine, and some people can pronounce it guillotine. I grew up in Canada and we learned French, or at least had a French class each week for rudimentary French when I was going to school. And if I remember correctly, I think we pronounced it guillotine. The L's are silent. Please, for those of you that are in Canada, correct me. <laughs> That's not correct anymore. I have these scissors. They have a slight curve to them. And I really like them. I have more control. I do the fussy cutting with them. What am I going to do with this? I'll probably cover it up with washi tape. Okay, let's put this down like so. And you're wondering how I'm going to put the, the window in. So am I. <laughs> but as I hold it up to the light here, I can see the light shining through. I have windows directly ahead of me. So I may be able to just trace around that by holding it up. So if you'll excuse me while I hold it up now and again. Yeah. Okay, let's. I'm not going to use the glue stick. I really didn't have a good experience with the glue stick yesterday. It didn't stick. Now maybe I didn't put enough on. That's possible. And ideally I would use the yes paste for this job. However, Glitter glue is what I picked up, and that's what's in my hand. <laughs> I'm estimating 
where the window is, and I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. There. And what? Yes. I can hear you talking to me. Put it on the envelope itself, not the paper. Yeah, that would be wise. A little while back in the fall, I made a pocket, a loaded pocket full of journaling cards, and I used a mailer with that, and it was fun. All right. Let's make sure. <laughs> All right. Yes. Putting this down. Here we go. And this glitter glue doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room, figuratively and literally. So quickly placing that on there. Quickly. Oh no, I'm never going to get the window out, am I? Well, this is interesting. Huh. Yes, I was determined to do this on camera, wasn't I? That's interesting. Sorry. <laughs> I'm holding this up to the light so I can just see the window where it goes on the outside. I've seen Maud use a, I'll link her channel down below, uh, use a, an X-Acto knife. I don't have one of those at this point. And I'm not sure that, to be very candid, I would trust myself with an X-Acto knife. So, it's scissor. Scissor time. What preparations have you been doing for Christmas? Do you decorate a lot? I have to say I'm not much of a person that decorates. We gave away and sold a, most of our Christmas decorations from when we had a large house, when we moved into the RV and traveled. I kept a small box with some ornaments that were dear to me from family. So that goes on the tree. And I was very happy to have the help of our almost five-year-old grandson putting those decorations on the tree. All right, now the window is open. And I have some blue ink to ink around the edges. And maybe I'll do that first. Wow, what a thought. Do it before the glue again. <laughs> this envelope is, it has a sheen to it. I'm hoping everything will stick fine. And obviously it has a pretty, dec wow, I didn't know that. It has a um, raised area that the ink goes on it. If they send me more packaging, I will gladly accept. It's one of those junk mails, you know, they want they want us to get a credit card. Yeah, not. Not happening. Let's go back to the glitter glue and try again. I have a nativity crash that I kept that goes up. But I haven't put it up yet. I always love watching children's eyes as they first see a nativity crash. And the, so it's a new, it's all the figures of the birth of Jesus, whether it's baby Jesus and, and Mary and Joseph and the wise men and the shepherds and everyone. It's almost like a little playhouse. My family history was my father, now I didn't know this as a child, but Christmas Eve after our celebration and I went to bed 
I was an only child, so. I went to bed. My dad would set up the crash and then put the uh, presents under the tree that Santa Claus had delivered for Christmas morning. I remember waking up as a child, running out to the living room. The lights would usually be on the tr already on. Mum and her dad would have gotten up early and turned on the lights. But it wasn't so much the presence that interested me. It was the, um, there was the crash, there was baby Jesus. So we did that with our children also. That it arrived Christmas day, Christmas morning, because Santa wanted to remind us that Christmas was about Jesus. I don't know if I like that. I messed up the paper. Ugh, oh, well, it's fine. It's down like so. Let's see if I can find some washi tape in amongst the many that I have. I do want to on the inside. This and like this, this will be on the inside. Maybe I'll worry about that later when I'm all done. First I have to... Oh dear. Oh, mom, no, it's okay. I was thinking the window is here. You'll see. this way. Now I want to cover here. I have this cute little fox or I have the <laughs> the window it will come out over just on their bottom ends. It's okay. Right. Let's repeat this and remember to cut out the window before I glue. Do you set up lights outside your home? In Canada, it used to look so beautiful. The snow would be on the ground. And at night time, with the lights lit and reflecting off the snow, beautiful. Here in the south, southern, the southern US, uh, I don't remember a white Christmas where we live. And though we do have snow every now and again, it's not usually Christmas. And snow lasts a day, maybe, or two, and then it melts away. And that's just fine with me. I know the children want more snow and that's Perfectly understandable. But for me, I get enough snow. I had enough snow the years we lived in Canada. So even though the lights are beautiful here in the south, they just don't have that same shimmer, that same glow as when you have snow. Honestly, say that's probably the only time I miss snow is at Christmas time looking at the lights from inside the house. <laughs> Many times driving through the snow 
and the blizzard. I went up to Canada last February and oh, I was in Canada also in, in last December because my mom still lives up in Canada as does Rub's parents. And oh dear, did you know that would happen? Hmm, it's the wrong angle. Okay, how do I? Well, I guess I won't worry about these tabs. I'll cover it with something else. Anyhow, driving up to Canada through the mountains and hitting a snowstorm, blizzard. Oh, it is not fun driving through blowing snow and not sure whether you're actually on the road is, is a little stressful. Okay. But I was fine. I made it up there fine. I made it back home again fine. So that's wonderful. Do you bake Christmas cookies? Is there a food that you eat specifically at Christmas and no other time of the year? This year it's going to be a very quiet Christmas for us, as is, I imagine, most people around the globe celebrate Christmas, celebrate the holidays. It's a different world we live in today, but it doesn't have to stay that way and probably won't stay that way because nothing remains the same, right? Everything, the only thing we're guaranteed is change. And there are days when I'm thankful for that. I imagine you are also. This change we've had in 2020 has not been always enjoyable. However, we can pick out those things that we appreciate regardless of the outward circumstances. More time with those in our households. I've talked with people that <laughs> for the first time in as long as they can remember they're sitting down with their children regularly at the dinner table. And that's wonderful. Uh, this has to be covered with something. I am not real pleased with my cutting here. What other things are you thankful for, regardless of the outward circumstances of this year? I can imagine if you were ill, whether it was with COVID or anything else, the trauma of that would be extreme. And we have to be thankful for those that are there to care for us. Uh, if your job has been not the way you'd hoped because of this year. Perhaps there's something else that you were thankful for because even though there were hardships, I try to focus on what I can be thankful each day, regardless of the outward circumstances, focusing my mind, my heart, my attention on the things that are positive and lovely and true and good and noble. There are very noble people acting on the behalf of society today. And I'm very thankful for them and their abilities and their sacrifices it's extraordinary what humankind can 
rise to, should they choose, even in extreme circumstances. Those that continue to give to their fellow man, and I'm not talking necessarily uh, monetarily, but with encouragement, with kindness, with just reaching out to let people know they're not alone. I mean, that's beautiful. So, for me, I try to focus on what's good and positive and what I can be thankful for. I'm thankful for junk journaling. I'm thankful for you. It's fun. Okay, I don't know if I really thought this through, but I'd see that truth there. <laughs> oh well. But I'm going to put Lily there. So, maybe it'll be okay. the fun we have in junk journaling. Huh? That's something to be thankful for. Reasons to laugh, even if you're laughing at yourself. <laughs> okay, let's paste her down. Unless I do it this way. And I can still see. Maybe I'll do that. On either side here. Better check to be sure that before I glue it in that it's okay. Yes, I know it's not the traditional way to do things, but I'm going to try it. For better or for worse. And let's make sure that it's not crooked. This side, and this side. Okay, here we are. There she is, smiling at me with her mischievous little face. Yesterday, <laughs> my, she was feisty yesterday when she was visiting. She's testing her boundaries as someone who is a year and a half does. <laughs> Do you have small children in your life right now? I must say, I was not very enthusiastic about becoming a grandparent five years ago. But they grow on you. <laughs> they become precious. It's interesting. Sometimes you don't know what you want until you have it, or the most precious things in your life you don't realize until they're given to you. I really need to go back over this and re-glue things. I'll do that off camera. I don't want you to have to watch me doing this over and over. All right. I would prefer a blue. I don't have a blue. So maybe this little this beige color would work here. I saw a beautiful picture on Instagram, someone doing this challenge. And she had a tree made out of washi tape. And each piece was so deliberately laid down. Extraordinary, beautiful work. I was 
in awe. The amount of time that it would have taken to arrange each piece so deliberately and neatly and cut so that the tree was slightly was angled. I don't know if I can put a link below this description of this video. I find for me washi tape is, is more of a how can I put it? Uh, I use washi tape to fix my mistakes so it may not be as deliberate as what I would do if I were just decorating. Not fix so much as hide. <laughs> so there's an interesting part of junk journaling. How to use your tools to uh, deliberately use them as art, not just I want to put uh, journaling cards and that in here later. All right, this, I'm not sure this did Maureen Astrid's digital papers justice, but it's a cute little face looking out of the window, regardless. I have to put my number 11 in and I'm not sure I found my, I misplaced the 11, the circle with 11. Well, that's interesting too. Oh, nope, found it, yay. <laughs> Where would that go? Maybe just up here in the corner. Ink the edges. Inking always helps. <laughs> Pull it together. And ink the edges of this little circle with the 11 on it. It's an advent number set. I'll put the link to that down below also, along with Maureen Astrid's beautiful papers. I've printed these out on ivory paper and on white paper. And I, for my personal likes and dislikes, I really prefer the ivory paper. It seems to bring out the best in these papers these digitals. I might just remove that washi later. <laughs> You'll find out <laughs> when you see tomorrow 12 because I still want to stick with this coloring on this page. I don't know what I'm going to do over here but for day 12 but it's going to be blue blues regardless. All right this is day 11 and I added a black and white photo. That much was successful. 
I'm going to attach this to this page and yeah, cover this up in some way, shape and form. Do more inking just to make it look a little more interesting. I wish you well. Take care. It's Lori. Hi there. It's me again. <laughs> Same day, still 11, but you might have noticed a few things have changed. So uh, when we last uh, finished the first part of this video, day 11, I had washi tape around here and I really wasn't very happy with it. And I didn't even like how it looked on the inside. So I decided to change a few things. I removed the washi tape. I put lace on instead. Now this is the lace. I cut the lace in half so I could have different widths. It goes further too. And then I made this into a booklet, not an envelope. I cut off the two uh, flaps and put in some paper and did lace on this side also. We've got, we still have the smiling black and white photo of our granddaughter. But I also added a few pages. And uh, yeah, so I could write. And that's me, and that's our grandson. So I thought I'd add a few more pages to write on, and this makes a nice little booklet. But then I knew that this was the side it should have been on. How do I attach it? I could, but it would be awkward because the picture is on this side. I gave in and decided to just make a two page display for number 11, day 11. And I gave in and yeah, I, I may add something to this or just leave it as journaling space. This is still Maureen Astrid's paper. Now I can attach this booklet to this side. I made a little paper clip from some of the paper with a little bit of sparkle on it. And I can attach the booklet to this side. And this completes then day 11. The ink that I used was Faded Jeans. It's a nice dark blue. I like that. And now I'm done. <laughs> I really do wish you a good day, a wonderful December. Happy crafting. Take care. It's Lori for the last time today. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.